Hey everybody, I'm here today with uh, the Moltel M141 laptop again, and this time I've got a couple of upgrades that I'm going to put into it. So uh, starting on the left here, I have an Intel AX200 uh, Wi-Fi card, a HP EX900 solid state drive, and a 16GB uh, stick of uh, Viper DDR4 memory. So to take this laptop apart, there are six Phillips number one screws. Um, that we'll have to take off of the bottom cover first. Next you'll want to get a trim or pry tool and um, I find that it's easiest to start at the back. So uh, if you can see just where the vent area is, um, there's a little bit of lip on top and that's, uh, that's where I like to get the trim tool started. So you can see over here in this corner you can see it's raised ever so slightly so just get your trim tool in there and then work the tool all the way across this edge now we can go ahead and pull the rest of the cover off exposing the internals and uh, in my uh, introduction and overview video, I mentioned how the bottom of this plate felt plasticky, but actually when you look at it, it's actually, it's actually metal. And furthermore, if you look at this little thermal pad here, um, I guess the bottom cover actually acts as a bit of a heat sink for the uh, native 128 gigabyte SSD, or I guess 256 if you have the M142. So looking at the innards of this uh, laptop, we can see over here on the left, just below the CPU cooling fan, we have the wireless card. Uh, next to that we have the native or original solid state drive which is SATA M.2 because uh, it's got the two cutouts over here and then to the right of that we have the spare NVMe slot and then under this uh, plastic sheet here we have the original uh, memory or sod sodium so we'll be replacing that. So let's start with the memory first. Got to peel back this plastic a little bit exposing the two locking tabs on either side and then you can just pull them out and pull the original memory out. So here is the replacement Patriot Viper Steel memory I have. This stick is 16 gigabytes versus the original 4. It's also just the same speed, PC uh, or 2,666 megahertz, and slightly faster latency, CL18 versus uh, CL19 on the original Crucial stick. So to put this in, I'll peel back the plastic, hold it back, I'll insert this at an angle, uh, make sure the contacts are, are aligned. So there's this little break in there in the contacts and a little tab there. Make, get that in. And then I will just rock the back in, making sure these two locking tabs snap into place. And that's it. I'm done right there. Next we'll do the new solid state drive. And first we need to unscrew this screw over here, which is also, again, a Phillips number one. And then we can take our new NVMe drive. This is a 500 gigabyte uh, HP EX900. And we'll align the this tab in the slot and then push it down. And after we hold it down, then we can go ahead and replace the Phillips number one screw. Lastly, we have our wireless card. So for this one, we're going to have to peel back some of this uh, tape. And then you see we have the two antenna connections as well as another Phillips screw. So we'll go ahead and pop those connections off first. Remember the white one goes on top and the black one on bottom. And then we'll take our Phillips number one screwdriver again and undo this screw. Once that's released, we can just pull this card out. Take our new card, once again aligning the slots and the tabs, place that in, make sure it's seated, then rock it down, and replace the Phillips number one screw. Then we can go ahead and take our antenna and plug them in, white on top and black on bottom. Once the antenna are resecured, we can go ahead and take this tape and just put it over everything again. Now we can start buttoning the unit back up and we'll do that by 
placing the uh, front side at an angle in, making sure the catches are caught along the front edge, and then rocking the rear side in and just pressing around till all the snaps uh, lock into place. Once the bottom cover is all snapped in, we can go ahead and take our six Phillips number one screws and put them back into the chassis. And that's it for putting the actual hardware in. Now there are some uh, drivers and uh, SSD we'll have to format and install. So we'll go ahead and turn the laptop on and get to that. Okay, so now that the computer is booted up, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the driver for the new uh, Wi-Fi card. So I'll go open up a browser and then we need to go to Intel's uh, uh, download site so you can see the URL that I have up here. And once we're there, then we'll go to Windows 10 Wi-Fi drivers and then we'll scro scroll down a bit so we can get to the download button. This is 64-bit OS, so I want the 64-bit version. We'll accept the license agreement, and then we'll download the driver. Once that's there, then we can go ahead and install it. Go through the installation menus. And, uh, you know, I'm showing you this. I'm connected to the internet, and that's because the Wi-Fi card was plug-and-play. Uh, however, I did need to reconnect to my Wi-Fi networks, so I just had to, you know, open up Windows Wi-Fi Manager, select my network, and re-enter the password, and it connected just fine. Okay, so we're done with the Wi-Fi. Now let's install the solid-state drive. Now we need to install the solid state drive uh, into the operating system. So we'll just go to our start and we'll search disk manager. Oh, here it is right here. And once this guy is open, and we can see that the new 500 gig hard drive is right here. So we'll go ahead and click it, right click, go tell it to set up a new simple volume. And the next and assign whatever letter we want. And we'll use uh, NTFS, and then you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it data. OK, there we go. And you saw the Windows Explorer open up. So if I go now to this PC, I can see my new 500 gig hard drive at volume location E. The last thing we'll do is we'll double check that our memory is all seen. So we'll open up our start, go to the settings or control. See the system memory. So here's the model name, and you can see installed RAM 16 gigabytes, 13.9 gigabytes usable. So we're seeing the full amount of memory. And if you're wondering why there's a disparity, um, it's probably because of the uh, memory that's being used for the onboard video uh, processor of the Ryzen 3 CPU. So that's it. We have successfully completed all of our upgrades. Lastly, if you're wondering how the microphone quality of the uh, M141, M42 is, well, you're listening to it, and it's not that great. So if you're using this for a streaming device, uh, you may want to upgrade to a different external uh, 